One farmer says, seems to me there was a tea party in Boston that was illegal too. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold. We shall seek to establish and maintain a dollar which will not change its purchasing and debt-paying power during the succeeding generation. As anguished shrieks rose up from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Government credit and government currency are really one and the same thing. A reserve of gold and a small reserve of silver. Why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form of reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. Hey, good evening. Welcome back to the Junius Malpe channel, the most boring channel on YouTube. I'm sunburned from an entire day in the garden, building garden boxes and doing dirt work, brick work, sand, gravel, you name it, trying to grow food and eke out a living on my little tiny plot of earth. Before we get into today's news, there is some news we're going to cover. Of course, uh, interesting headlines, lots of topics to venture into and discuss. I hope I don't take up too much of your precious time or lull you to sleep. Uh, I wanted to show you this. Uh, you can stop by and check out Mr. James Bradley's podcast, The Untold Pacific. If you go onto the site and look at the episodes, or if you have any of the links, I'll put them all down below because his podcast is at various outlets and sources. Um, if you have an Apple phone or any phone that takes uh, podcasts, you can look up his podcast on there. The most recent one he posted is the interview, the discussion that he and I had. Uh, it was a good one. It was difficult. He's over in New Zealand, and I'm far from there in a different place, a different part of the world. There were some technical difficulties where I could not hear all of his questions, and we'd have to pause and, and get them relayed to me uh, through another communication route. But overall, it came out very well. It was a good talk. He's a good man. He does. He runs a pretty good podcast. He's a brilliant individual. I don't know how he found himself here on the Junius Mulpey channel, but he happens to be a fan, and he's one of you, one of us. Uh, he's been gold-pilled. It's quite obvious. If you go to the site, though, uh, give it a listen. Give him a five-star rating. <laughs> he's, uh, he's one of a kind. And again, very educational person to discuss things with. And there's a lot of good content on his page. So go give it a look. I'll definitely put the links that I have for him down below. Silver scores its biggest monthly gain in nine years as U.S.-China tensions boost gold prices. As you've seen, silver has been performing quite well lately. Now, as we move to looking at some charts, it's back to where it was finally at in 2016 and 2018 in the summer months. Uh, finally above the 18 mark. We're at $18.48. It was up 51 cents uh, there, 2.88%. So pretty good day for silver, pretty good week. Uh, we'll get into that. I think it was up 24 or so percent that I saw for the month. Uh, something like that. It's doing quite well, uh, surprising, and it's outpacing uh, gold for the month anyways. Looking at another five-year chart, this is gold up at $1,743, up $14.70, up 0.85%. Uh, really climbing, getting close to almost, I mean, we're, we're getting up there, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty soon we're going to be knocking on the all-time high. Again, Remember, don't look at the price. Gold and silver are not necessarily increasing in their value. The currencies that purchase them are only growing weaker. Now, before we get into more metals news, we talked about bankruptcies the other evening on a live, and I wanted to touch on that once again. It's going to be a theme this year. The corporate bankruptcy wave has just gotten started Reading from this article here, what's happening? So far this month, 27 firms that report at least $50 million in liabilities have sought bankruptcy protection, according to Bloomberg reports. That's the highest monthly total since May 2009, right on the tail end and during the major crisis of 2007 and 8. Stay woke. As we have seen in previous times of economic stress, companies facing unforeseen financial burdens do not immediately resort to bankruptcy. 
Sudeep Kesh, head of S&P Global Credit Market Research, says in a new report, the majority of bankruptcy defaults we have seen so far in the second quarter of 2020, companies that were facing idiosyncratic challenges before the COVID-19 and oil price shock. What to watch? Already this year, 88 companies globally have defaulted on their debt, according to S&P Global. That's nearly double the number of corporate defaults to this point in 2019-49, and more than double 2018's total of 43. Of the 88 defaults, 59 have been the result of missed interest and principal payments or bankruptcy. What's next? Distressed debt investors and law firms are gearing up for the onslaught of bankruptcies, insolvencies, and liquidations expected this year, with legal scholars warning congressional leaders in a recent letter that federal bankruptcy courts are likely to be overwhelmed by this flood of cases. Centerbridge Partners recently activated a roughly $3 billion capital pool that had been on standby for four years to direct at distressed assets, the firm's co-managing partner Jeffrey Aronson told the Wall Street Journal. So as we discussed last night, bankruptcy is going to be the word, it's going to be a search term, it's going to be a theme, not only in this year, but in, I, I would guess, the years coming. It's going to take a long time for the economic damage that's being inflicted still upon many different corporations and companies, and it's going to only uh, become something that we tend to see quite frequently in the news. 24-Hour Fitness prepares for bankruptcy while gyms start to open. They're making news today. One of the largest fitness and workout gyms that's a chain in the United States facing bankruptcy. Big chains filed for bankruptcy every week in May. Here is six of them, and the six of them I will not read off. We already went over them last night. It's just six major companies, Hertz, JCPenney, and so on. Central banks to increase gold reserves. Let's take a look at this. At the same time, these individuals are telling you not to purchase gold. It's a dumb move. It's a slow move. What are you doing purchasing gold? Well, at the same time, the central banks are buying it, as usual, they tend to be the biggest stackers of them all. The World Gold Council has released a gold reserves survey that determined central banks are planning to substantially increase their buying of gold bullion. The report noted that this year's Central Bank Gold Reserves, CBGR, survey highlights several notable shifts in central bank attitudes towards gold. Increased interest in gold's quote, performance during times of crisis, unquote, would suggest that the fast-changing financial and economic landscape has sparked a significant transformation in investment attitudes. At the same time, factors that were relevant before the COVID outbreak, such as negative interest rates, increased political risk, concerns about fiscal sustainability, and changes to the geopolitical order continue to inform central banks' view of gold. That really stands out there. If you want to listen to that again, think of that for a moment. Changes to the geopolitical order continue to inform central bank's view of gold. Things are shifting. They're shaking and shifting, my friends, and central banks are looking to the very medium of exchange that humans have looked to for the past 10,000 years or so, and that is gold. Looking ahead, profound uncertainty about the impact of the coronavirus pandemic may accelerate some of these factors and, in turn, prompt central banks to look more closely at gold. The markedly higher proportion of respondents who are planning to add gold to their reserves this year may also reflect concerns about the unpredictable impact of the pandemic. Ultimately, the combination of recent market developments and persistent long-term trends has strengthened central banks' interest in gold, pointing to continued purchases from the official sector. According to the 2020 CBGR survey, 20% of central banks intend to increase their gold reserves over the next 12 months, compared to just 8% of respondents in the 2019 survey. 
The increase is particularly notable as central bank buying has reached record levels in recent years, adding around 650 tons in 2019 alone. Again, I'll interject, we are in a multi-decade bull run for gold. And if this doesn't tell you that, I don't know what else will. A total of 88% of respondents say that negative interest rates are a relevant factor for their reserve management decisions. The continuation of expansionary monetary policies due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which coincided with the fieldwork of this survey, will likely keep interest rates near zero for the foreseeable future. Again, the very reason, the same reasons that central banks are stacking heavy, stacking in gold, is the very reasons that you and I look at it and make the same decision. Just review that one thing again, the continuation of expansionary monetary policies. That is their motivation. And these are this is not just the central banks here in the United States. This is a survey of the world's central banks, my friends. Furthermore, 79% of respondents view gold's performance during times of crisis as an important reason to hold gold, up from 59% in 2019, while 74% of respondents consider gold's lack of default risk to be an important reason for holding the metal, up from 59% in 2019. Yes, in a world of mass bankruptcies and currency devaluations, who wouldn't look at gold? It's never gone to zero. It can't. It's virtually impossible. Again, there will never come a day where gold is zero, where you cannot give it away, or where you have to pay someone to come and haul your few measly amount of gold sovereigns off of your property, or to take them to the landfill where you toss them because they're just taking up space. It hasn't happened since the beginning of time, and it will not happen ever. Gold does not, cannot, will not, never. It will never go to zero. And that is something that central banks like. It's one of the many values in holding gold. These shifts may suggest a re-evaluation of gold's role amidst ongoing financial and economic uncertainty, while also reflecting long-term concerns about fiscal sustainability as government stimulus is deployed to cushion the global economy. What does that mean when they use government stimulus to cushion global economy? Well, They're going to devalue your currency. You're going to be able to purchase less goods and services with the fiat trash paper notes, the coupons you hold with the images and inscriptions placed upon them by the state. They are going to purchase less goods and services. And they're also going to purchase less gold, mainly. So you got to get the gold now while you can, while the fiat's still hot off the press and the ink's still wet. Historical position and long-term store of value remain the top two reasons for holding gold cited by 83% and 79% of respondents respectively as highly or somewhat relevant. But, quote, performance during times of crisis, unquote, has risen from fifth to third place, cited as highly or somewhat relevant by 79% of the respondents compared to 59% in 2019. Some 60% of respondents buy gold through the global OTC market, while over a quarter buy gold from domestic production, rising to 31% among EMDE central banks. Good delivery bars continue to be the mainstay among central banks, with 75% buying gold in that form. Kilo bars and Dore were much less popular, being employed by 6% and 3% of respondents, respectively. What I wouldn't give to just hold in my arms and cradle it like a little golden baby, a good delivery bar. Even the little banks, the non-central bank banks, know that gold is a buy. U.S. Bank. Central bank money printing should keep gold prices supported. Gold remains in a bullish trend with prospects for an economic recovery that will take a while, and the likelihood that Federal Reserve officials will remain accommodative, said a research note from U.S. Bank Asset Management Group. Gold did not move much last week, but nevertheless, analysts reiterated their view that the yellow metal remains in a bullish trend. Quote, the potential for future inflation resulting from central bank money printing should keep gold prices supported, 
they said. The bank said recent economic data increase the likelihood of a more drawn-out recovery and raises the possibility of a more permanent hit to economic growth. Quote, the likelihood of further stimulus eventually coming from the Federal Reserve and Congress is substantial, unquote, they added. Ultimately, the bank said treatment and prevention of the COVID pandemic may be necessary before the economy and normalcy return and enable equities to trend meaningfully higher. Treasury yields should remain relatively low given ongoing economic uncertainty and a clear bias from the Fed to keep borrowing costs low. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, in a world that is going bankrupt, in a world of zero interest rates for the foreseeable future, unquote, in a world that awash with the unbacked fiat trash notes being issued via computer screen, via digits slammed on a keyboard, and printing presses that are running so fast and so hot they're running out of paper and ink at the same time. In this world, the very people who scoff at those who would hold gold are stacking it and buying it hand over fist as much as they possibly can and increasing their vault stores every single day. It's been a theme that we've been witnessing over the past decade. It's been talked about here on the channel. Central banks are buying gold. They're the largest holders of gold in the world, holding 19% or something of the entire amount of gold ever mined since the beginning of humans. And yet, we here on the Junius Maltby channel, you, the faithful subscribers and viewers and watchers, those in the comments, were scoffed at, mocked, laughed about, ridiculed for doing the very same thing. The architects of this madness, the, the managers, those at the helm of the global economy are doing the very same thing. You wonder sometimes. Those that aren't stacking gold, those who have not become gold-pilled, what are they going to do when it actually does occur? When, the, when it finally dawns upon them, if it ever does, when they realize they should have stacked, they should have got some metals, and they didn't, and their wealth is blowing away like dust in the wind. Well, interesting times are ahead. and I know many of you are doing everything you can of course, it's not the most important thing, your wealth, metals. It just happens to be the theme here, one of the topics we talk about the most. But uh, it's definitely going to be something to look at. I can't imagine, you know, you look back, some of you even leave the comments. You go up and you, <laughs> you'll leave a comment on a video that was put out four, five, six years ago where the gold prices are mentioned. And it's like a time machine and you wish you could go back into that video, to that day, to that price, and purchase some gold or silver if you could. Well, that time is now. Today is that next video. In six years from now, when you go back and you watch this video, what will the gold price be then? What will it be when you're watching this video in the future? So just imagine that. Like the old Chinese proverb says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today.